Welcome in, everyone. This is another edition of the Full Time Roundup Podcast. It is your host, Daniel Brackett, joined alongside me, Harrison Clark. Harrison, it was a wonderful weekend for footy, for sports. Um, your team got blown out in college football. My team won. So pretty surprising here, um, honestly, that you know my team won as well. And uh, Charlotte FC tied with Miami. Um, but both of our soccer teams won, so congratulations on that. You as well. I, w- I think blown out for UNC is a little bit ridiculous. They lost by one point, um, but they were up 20-0, so it really felt like a blowout. In my know. head, it was a blowout because of I guess that. if you compare it to like losing or giving up 70 points to James Madison and then blowing a 20-0 to lead, like in the end, they all feel the same, and I just feel <laughs> really sad at the end, but uh, – other than that, yeah, quality weekend. There we go. Um, and we'll go ahead and, and jump right in to, uh, to, to the games just to give you guys a little bit of preview here. We'll be talking about th- this weekend's action. We'll be going over Champions League matches. We have some best bets for you. And then we'll be back on Thursday previewing this weekend's action as well. So two episodes this week. We did not do an episode last week. Um, So just to keep that in mind, and before we start, go ahead and give us a follow on Twitter at Full Time Roundup. Um, On Spotify, Apple, or any other place you get your this podcast, go ahead and give us a five-star rating. And uh, definitely subscribe on YouTube. We're actually doing video content now. Um, You know, we're starting to get more in the flow of doing TikTok clips of, you know, what we're, what we like the most about the episodes we do. So definitely give that a follow as well on, on YouTube shorts or, or TikTok. Um, so to get that out of the way, great weekend, especially in the premier league, a lot of talking points. And um, I think I, I kind of want to start this with, with city dropping points uh, to Newcastle. Um, it was a seven 30 game, so I'm not going to act like I woke up at seven 30, but I did wake up right at halftime and watch the entire second half. Um, and, uh, was really surprised that city just didn't find a way to get a winner at the end. Um, they were up at halftime and, and gave away a, a penalty here to, um, was it? Is it Gordon? Yeah, yeah Gordon. Gordon. And uh, didn't know, you know, he he's not the penalty taker usually, but he's drawn the most penalties out of anyone um, in the Premier Who's League. That? Uh, I think it's five now since like last season, which is a pretty high number. So, I mean, that's a great result for for Newcastle. And if you're Liverpool, you're Arsenal, or any other team trying to compete for the Premier League title, these are the kind of the weekends and the games that you love is when City drops points. No question. You know, it brings a smile to my face whenever I see City not come home with three. Um, you can make an argument that Newcastle arguably should have won this game. I mean, their XG is almost two, um, you know, and City's was below one. They get the goal from Vardiol, um, gives them the lead by halftime. But um, then Ederson brought down Gordon. He was able to bang in the pen. And like you said, I think that one – is this going to be, I think the question I have is, is this going to be a common theme? We start going forward because we mentioned last episode that, you know, Rodri is going to be a huge miss. I mean, the guy doesn't lose when he's in there. Just a fact. He doesn't lose. Um, and I, of course this isn't a loss, but it probably feels like a loss when you're running for the, we're going for the title every year and the way that Arsenal is picking up points right now. So um, definitely not a game that, you know, city intends to drop points in. I know Newcastle, um, have a lot of talent, but they also haven't had a great start to the season. Um, no. So obviously a massive result for them. Um, and like you mentioned, it gives a lot of hope. I think that, you know, to teams that are chasing them, um, that they are human in a sense. No, I can't, I can't agree more. And I don't know if you saw the, the actual foul in the box, but I actually think that was kind of a soft penalty, to be honest. Um, and I, this I didn't see it. This is a guy who doesn't like City. So coming from me, I feel like that means a lot. Um, and there is stock in there. But, I mean, it is what it is. 
I thought Newcastle at times looked really good in this game. It's kind of frustrating because you think they can take the next step to actually challenge for like top four and then they lay an egg. Um, they seem to really show up for the big games and then the the small games, they they don't. And which is, uh, I feel like that's very frequent with teams that aren't quite there yet, but are getting there. You know, they, they show up in the big games, it gives you hope, and then you, know, you go and drop points to like a Brentford or something. So, um, Tenali's back. You know, he ran his absolute socks off. You got Tenali and Gimaresh in the midfield. That's a pretty good pivot there. Um, Harvey Barnes, Isak missed too. So, you yeah. talked about City missing Rodri and De Bruyne. You know, arguably Newcastle's best player missed out. So, I feel like that pretty much evened it out there and, you know, a great, great result for the Tyne side. Um, I, uh, I yeah. love Castle's midfield. Like when it's, when it's and those Joel three Linton. of Bruno G, Tonali, and Joe Linton is an absolute monster. Unit. That yeah. guy is a freak. <laughs> and they got all three of them going, especially, you know, you get it to Anali to get his reps back in. I know it's been a long time since he's really been a big part of what they want to do there, but you get him involved, those three together, I think it's a perfect mix for them. Absolutely lethal. Um, but no, I, I, I agree 100%. Um, to kind of go to another result that shocked me, and probably the most entertaining match, your inquisitive look knows where I'm going with this. Um, this is Chelsea's statement win over Brighton. Cole Palmer, first time of all time in the Premier League, four goals in one half. Um, I was stunned by this game. I was stunned by Cole Palmer. And, uh, yeah, Harrison, they're, I'm kind of scared now because people have heard me kind of talk shit on Chelsea now for six months, maybe 12 months, and uh, they look really fucking good right now. And <laughs> I'm scared personally it's okay you're not the only one who's talked a lot of shit about chelsea over the last 12 months i think just about everybody involved or who watches soccer has talked shit about chelsea in the past and Mareska. and yeah. i owe i owe both of them a big apology actually i owe Mareska a big apology chelsea shelled out the money so they should be good but i did not was not a believer in Mareska. and you know we've seen some good managers come and go and he seems like he's the guy yeah no question i think that he's obviously got the guys that he wants. He knows who he wants to play. The guys that he knows aren't going to be in his plans. He purposely like just does, doesn't even work with them in, in uh, training. And like at the beginning of people at the beginning of the season, people were saying it was brutal, but at the same time, like if you want a cohesive unit, you got to get the guys together who, you know, are going to play for you. Um, so I think he's done a great job of that, obviously. And then managing the team itself. I mean, going forward, Chelsea right now are pretty frightening. I'm not going to lie. Like, the way Cole is going, Cole is playing right now. Like he's one of the best players in the world. Like I, I just, you can put him anywhere and he's going to be successful. He's taking guys on one-on-one. -on -one. He's playing some unbelievable passes. And then he scores four in one half this weekend. I mean, his numbers since he's joined Chelsea have been absolutely ridiculous. Um, he's almost, he's averaging almost a goal and a, a goal or an assist every single game, um, which is pretty remarkable. Um, this game was just, Dude, there was a stretch in first in the in, for like 20 to 25 minutes in the first half where it looked like every single chance for either side was going in. Yeah. Um, I mean, Chelsea are always going to give teams opportunities. I guess we're just kind of seeing that. Like, I don't know what the hell Robert Sanchez was doing on either of Brighton's goals. Um, the second one in particular was horrific, just passes it straight to him and it's in the back of his net two seconds later. Um but man, Chelsea going forward, it's it's really exciting. And you knew when Brighton, they're playing that high ass line, dude. I, it's a ball through every single time. Any time you run, you run right, like they mentioned it in the broadcast, it reminded me a ton of Chelsea playing Tottenham last year when Tottenham was on nine men at one point, and it was just a ball through every single time. Uh, and that's how Nicholas Jackson ended up with his hat trick that game. So. I mean, the free kick, too, from Palmer. I mean, good grief. Apparently he's, doesn't even take free kicks. In training. No. He's he, like, no, I just, I just, I mean, I, just went out I, there and hit it. I've seen him take a couple for Chelsea, but for the most part, I do feel like it's it's either a healthy Reese James when he's in there 
or it is like Enzo scored a ridiculous free kick last year too. I mean, yeah, that's the first that's the first free kick goal Palmer has scored, or at least that I remember. But the guy is just lethal right now, and Chelsea are buzzing. Um, can we make the case? Can they push if City starts to if City has results like that? I mean, I don't know. It's still a really young team, but it don't don't it, get ahead of yourself here. I'm I'm all in. I told you I'm all in. This is like this is complete bias coming out of my mouth, but like top four is so much in reach. I think with this, oh, team. And, that's, and that's a yeah. reasonable. That's the most reasonable expectation I have is that with the kind of talent that they have and the coaching that they're getting from Reska, top four is so much in reach. I argued that you should be top four just because how much you spend and the signings you guys are so deep in the front line so we're so I, young though and so young but you know I, i've seen what i need to see defensively obviously that's always going to be a problem and that's probably is what's you know you're always going to score goals it seems it's just how many you're going to give up um almost looking like a, a spurs last year where attacking with Ange, they looked amazing and then just would give up the dumbest goals of all time. Um, still kind of doing it uh, if you're a Spurs fan, but I'm just saying like, that's like my comp right now or like an early Jurgen Klopp Liverpool side, very leaky in the back, but really good going forward. Cole Palmer might be the dude, might be the guy who looks, you know, he could not look dumber. Like the guy has a rock brain. Yep. And he scores four goals, and I don't even think he realizes how many goals he's scored. Like, it's it's incredible. And I think, I honestly think, like, I, you're right. Like, I really don't feel like there's much going on up there. No, there's but nothing I think going that, on. I think that almost helps him, like, no, it does. Not, not, Absolutely. not process anything. Like, there's a reason that he hasn't scored, hasn't missed a penalty. And he's he just he's cold as shit. That's he's what, ice, what he is. Like really ice cold because he like can't like fathom how good at soccer he is. Like, right, like, right. That's like it, it can't go to his head and his ego can't like blow up because yeah. he's like too stupid to realize how good he is. And I think he's the best player in England. So, you know, if he think hopefully he'll continue this little like thing he's doing. I don't know if it's just like his charm of his personality or like he really is just that a good kid or or what, but you know, I'm I'm really hoping that he continues to stretch because it's it's absolutely nuts. The and, TikTok and the, content, al- the TikTok algorithm right now for me is just all funny. Cole and it's just him. It's just memes of Cole. Like the one the one where <laughs> there was a I think it was the, probably their media day pre before the year, and they're like, "Yeah, give us the one, two, oh, three, I saw that. two score," and then he just goes, "What about four? And they're like, "Ah," <laughs> uh, and then it just flashes to him scoring four this weekend. Dude's a beauty. I mean, he's just—I don't know. My, I don't have—I don't have any words to say. My favorite's when the reporter asks like a perfectly simple question. It's like, so Cole, how did it feel like uh, scoring two goals today? He just like is that what? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, do you... but it's anyway, it's so strong, dude. Yeah, no, it is. But he's a he's truly an anomaly, and and, and I honestly love it. But uh, just to recap, um, you know, if we're talking top four, Arsenal won kind of late, um, four two, but you know, it was tied for a while there, and they ended up winning. Uh, four two, so you know, good on them. And Liverpool do the same. Fairly tight games from fairly bad opponents, but you know, those are the games you gotta grind out and, and win. Um, Liverpool were kind of playing with their food there, so a little bit different of a game in terms of mistakes. But uh, both teams look good. A couple other things I, I wanted to to mention: Brentford, uh, three games in a row have scored within a minute. <laughs> um. Insane. Don't really know how that's possible. Two of them <laughs> is from Brian and Buemo. Um, he's having a hell of a year so far. Yeah, I mean he's a phenomenal player, and he's 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 like a Diego Jota on on Wolves, who who's like a depth piece for a top six side. Like I don't think mm-hmm. he should be at Brentford anymore. He could be on like United second string type type player. First string. Uh, I mean first string for United, but for any other. Um, but. Yeah, I thought that was super interesting. Um, and we also saw Everton win their first game of the season. So, holy shit. Big Congratulations. Ups. I mean. They're back. I I guess. Are they back? Like, I don't. I mean, Dwight McNeil is just. Good player. Back. 
Dwight McNeil put Burnley on his back before they got relegated, and it seems like he's doing the same region for Everton right now. So I'm really interested to see if he can continue to do that. His first um, goal was nasty. Did you see he, that? I, I didn't see the goal, but he can strike a ball. I know. Yeah, he that. bent it in from outside the box, top corner. I was like, okay. The talk I mean, need that. There's a reason why I was okay with Liverpool signing him when he was down in the championship as like a you need a goal throw on Dwight McNeil in the 85th minute and see what he can do with his left foot. Um uh, I'm a big fan personally, so <laughs> I, I, I like it. Um, and and the last game that I wanted to talk to in, in legitimate depth here was um, Spurs and United uh, at Old Trafford. Sp- Spurs score, you know, not as quick as Brentford usually do, but pretty freaking quick. Vandeven takes the ball literally coast to coast. What a fucking run! And this is the second time. I've seen this type of goal against Manchester United at Old Trafford in the same week, Harrison. That twint, twint game, yeah. twinte, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know how you pronounce it because I'm not Dutch, but the the guy basically took it coast to coast and then sweated it. Same exact goal. There's six players. Like I wish I we had some screens here to show you, like Carragher breaking down that goal or something. <laughs> that would have been good content. But – I mean, no one even challenges for the ball. He literally just runs right through everybody. And no one even sticks a finger. You have Diogo Dallo on the back post. Literally sees Brennan Johnson open and just decides not to not to cover the back post. I mean, embarrassing. Like, absolutely astonishing, embarrassing. You play for one of the biggest clubs in England. No, the world. And you guys are showing your bare ass on prime on a prime time spot twice in a week. I mean, is it co- coaching malpractice? Is it just the same shit with United that it is every single year? Like, like they have talent. Tanag spent six hundred million dollars. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I really don't. It's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. Uh, it's, it's funny bad. too. Like, uh. I mean, I, I despise Manchester United and it's, I'm laughing and smiling every time I see them pull this kind of performance, but like, dude, it's just bad. like Ten Hag. I don't, I really, I don't know how he's still there. I, I really don't like, this is the same shit that's happened for the past year. And yeah, the trophy saved his job, but like, how, how far do you go with this? I, I really, Dan, I, I don't see him making it past the next like international break. No, I don't. I don't either. You have Rude Van Nistelrooy as the assistant coach. I think he's got someone else there already, kind of lined up as an interim. Reminds me of uh, another sport right now that's kind of happening with the Eagles, Sirianni, Vic Fangio, and Kellen Moore as the OC and DC. Like those guys are ready to step in. That's how I feel. Rude Van Nistelrooy is. I'm just like a a comp king right now. Sorry, it's way too early in the You're podcast. Hot, kid. I'm kind of hot right now. Yeah. But, I mean. You sign Manuel Ugart. He, he watches. Dreadful. He watches the dude just fucking run right past him. I, I. There's no passion, and it's hilarious because it's the most Man United thing. You on the last game of the season, of course, you show up against your rivals and you win the FA Cup, and it buys Ten Hag, you know, three more months when arguably you should have sacked him from even with the good season. So it is absolutely dreadful. I, I, I don't know where you go from here. And I, I don't feel bad for United fans because you had the Fergie era. But, I mean, if you're a newer Manchester United fan within, you know, say a decade, I mean, this has got to be a tough ride because the dysfunction here is I just don't know who you hire to fix this. It, you've gone through five, six managers, a billion dollars. I, I don't know, man. What the What the hell happened to Marcus Rashford? Genuine question. I, I don't I don't really know. Dude, um, two years ago he was unreal. Last being, year, bad. Being a, star, being a star at Manchester United, and then you don't have a manager like Fergie to you know set you straight. Fergus the Ferguson era was so good from what I've been reading in his autobiography because I didn't get the wit I didn't get the to witness that much of mm-hmm. that era, but I mean he 
he basically shoved David Beckham out because he he thought that David Beckham was bigger than the team, and Fergie doesn't doesn't mess around with that. So I, I don't I don't know the 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 dressing room seems to have more power than than the coach usually. That's how the coaches get sacked. Um, I'm surprised we haven't seen reports about that in the locker room at Manchester United. I saw I saw a video today, and it was Sky Sports talking to they brought Graham Potter on the desk and they were talking to and Graham Potter was addressing the links that he's gotten to Manchester United. <laughs> it was like I don't know about I that mean, one. You <laughs> have to have you have to have a very strong personality in terms of in terms of um your manager at Manchester United. Tin Hog was supposed to be that guy. He ended up just being kind of a dickhead like I think Thomas Tuchel is the guy. Um, I think so. honest. I think T- Thomas Tuchel is the guy, but then he's going to freeze out probably half of these bum signings, and you're kind of back at square one until in, t- in terms of building a team. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the. That's hey, kind Chelsea of the fans are happy with Sancho, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah well, he did well at Dortmund in the Champions League final, so I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure he will. That that makes sense. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, uh, kind of going to a different note here. We got the Bundesliga up. Bayer Leverkusen, Bayern Munich shared the spoils 1 1. Disappointing game um, in terms of I thought this was going to be like one of the instant classics. But we did have two really good goals in this game. Um, Pavlovich, the, the young German, absolute rocket. Um, and I'm blanking on who scored the Bayer Leverkusen goal. Was it Andrik? Andrik from outside the mm-hmm. box, both off a corner, I believe. So similar goals in that fashion. Just, But I actually was surprised. I've been kind of laying on this take that Bayer Leverkusen are better. And Bayern Munich kind of dominated this game, Harrison. They were all over them the entire game. Um, well, at least they looked so good. No, nah, Yeah, dude's a problem. He's a, he's a good player. And it's funny because now Crystal Palace look horrific. Uh, <laughs> but that's a different story. Uh, yeah, Byron were dominated possession. I really wouldn't say there was too many A-plus chances in this game. I mean, Byron had the opportunity early, I believe, in the second half when it was Gnabry. And he hit the post twice. Uh, that was the really big opportunity for them to take the lead. But like you mentioned, the two goals that were scored, Andrik, Banger, bottom corner. Uh, that put Leverkusen up to a to a lead against the run of play too, um, and then uh, was it Pavlovich? Yeah, just an absolute banger. Yeah, half volley, top corner, and uh, I thought we were going to see play more goals in this game, but we didn't end up having that, um, and it ended up being, I guess, for Leverkusen, you take this draw any day of the week. Um, obviously, tough game on the road. Um, in a game that I thought they would really have more possession in. They kind of just sat back and let Byron have the ball and um, let them pass it away. Um, but I don't know. I guess I expected more from it. I just thought it was going to be a thriller, and it kind of was a snooze fest, to be honest. Um, yeah. But, I mean, sometimes that's what you get with two of the top teams. You're going to get a KG one, and, you know, neither team is going to want to give up anything. In terms of my buyer, buyer Leverkusen take, I feel like they're still in it in terms of the title. So is a lot of teams. So at least, you know, I got that from that. Um, I didn't love how Xavi Alonso set up his team, but I don't I don't know if this Leverkusen team is as good as last year either. So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of have to see, um, you know, talk to me at the end of October and, and we'll have to see now. There were, uh, you know, Stugart drew Wolfsburg. I thought that was pretty interesting because I, I didn't expect Wolfsburg to be um, a similar wagon to what they were last year, but it seems like they they definitely are. And then Stugart um, did have a red card too. Yeah, Stugart did get a red card, but Dennis Undoff comes off the bench and, and saves them the point. But the, the game that I thought was super interesting um, <laughs> was a Friday game, Bochum versus Dortmund. And... I thought Dortmund was going to take care of business and absolutely blow the doors off of Bochum. And Bochum go up 2-0 in the first half, and I am just dumbfounded. I'm, I'm texting my Dortmund buddy, 
just giving them shit for it because I, I just was in disbelief, basically. And uh, they ended up uh, tying it up or no, scoring one right before half and ended up winning the game 4-2, similar to you know the Arsenal that they've, you know, garbage time goal and everything. But um, I, I, qu- I haven't quite figured out this Dortmund team yet. And uh, they're showing like flashbacks of last year, but – they they do play a little bit better football than they did last year. Have you been able to get a handle on them yet? No, I think they're still trying to adjust to Garassi being there. It seems yeah. like he's like not not super comfortable yet. Um, that's my sense watching the game. I was like, he just doesn't look like he's really in the flow quite starting yet. With, I mean, he's starting with the injury to start the season didn't help that either. No, yeah, it's going to take him probably a little bit of time to get back up to his speed. But I mean, he's still back too. Like the guy is such a threat in the box. I, they're probably also not used to having a, a, a really a true number nine. I feel like they haven't had a real nine for a while. For a while, and they finally have a guy who they can put ball, balls into into the box. I mean, scores a header in the first half to make it two one. Um, they were really bad the first half. First bad. thirty minutes, first yeah. thirty five minutes, they were dreadful. And Bochum, Bochum, they were growing with confidence after they scored the first one. Then they get a second one. And that's really when Dortmund knew they had to wake up was when they were down 2-0 and needed to avoid this embarrassment of losing at home to Bochum. Um, and they put it together and really dominated the game from then on out. But, uh, yeah, I, I haven't really gotten a read on Dortmund. I think Garassi, you know, you get him fully involved, they'll be a good team. Um, Gittens didn't really have a huge impact in this one. Came off Disappointing. The or, sorry, sorry, he got started. injured. Um, he got started. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I, I guess I wanted to see more from him, especially because he usually is a super sub and he got his chance in the lineup. But, um, yeah, we'll see. I guess it's still early, um, but they got to win, I guess. Like they avoided the embarrassment. Yeah, no, I, I, I get that. I, I will say another team that, you know, if, if you don't know much, and I don't know much about this team personally, but uh, I've kind of figured out that Holstein Kiel games just in general uh go ahead sit on the couch have a cold one or get your morning coffee whatever you prefer and they're on that game because that game's going to be a wild ride from start to finish um includes goals really bad concessions some nice goals as well so they're kind of a they're a nice pulse check team to wake up to in, in terms of a saturday at 9 30 um, they gave frankfurt a scare for a little while and they did they did and Mar- thankfully you know they miss it. It's a key. It's a TK, a TK. but but um, you know Oliver or is it something? Marmouche is is a phenomenal player and he's really balling out. He's actually the top goal scorer of the Bundesliga as of right now. So wanted to give him a shout out and, and Kiel a shout out. They're they're a pretty fun team to watch. Even they might not win many, but but they look they look good <laughs> in terms of just for a neutral. Um, good entertainment. Great under entertainment. Also, if you know another pro Bundesliga on Sunday, the scores were four two and four three. Yep, for, for the standalone. So, not much else you can ask for in terms <laughs> of entertainment. Um, kind of kind of switching to the La Liga here. Um, in you know, in, in opposite manner, uh, three out of the four Spanish Sunday games were all one one one. And the other one was one zero. So, talk about a, a tale of two leagues here. But uh, in terms of you know the biggest game of of the weekend was definitely uh, Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid drawing. Um, Eder Militao absolute rocket to to start the scoring. No Mbappe obviously in this game, and and Atletico knocked on the door for a while, and they happened to get their their goal late. Uh, it was almost offsides until it wasn't. And uh, Simeo's men get get a much-needed point in terms of keeping, keeping pace with the, the top three. Yeah, they don't lose. Uh, that's a big. That's big. They don't lose. They will either find a draw or they'll win the game. Um, and that's a good sign for Atletico going forward, especially when you need to pick up as many points as you can um, just to even keep pace with Barcelona and Real Madrid. Um, so that's obviously a huge positive for them. Pulling out a draw against Real Madrid in and of itself is a win. So, and any any Real Madrid, regardless of whether Kylian Mbappe plays or not, which he did in this game, um, 
But the Met, we talk about the Met. That place was fired up. That the game got delayed because the yeah. supporters were going mad. So um, always great home support for Atletico, and it's always a tough place to play, um, and a really good result for them. You know, they, you get the late goal, you keep the momentum going into the next fixture, um, and you draw one of the best teams of the world. Like you can't ask for much more. This was also a good result for a team that didn't play, and that's Barcelona. Barcelona happened to lose to Osasuna. Um, mm -hmm. You know, at some point, the young playing as many youngsters as possibly as possible is going to catch up with you, and it did this game with with this four two result, especially with no Ter Stegen in the back of the net. Uh, they did sign Chesney, and he came. He reported to Catalonia um, this week, so they'll probably have him for. I'd say next weekend's action. Um, but you know, they could have really if Real Madrid won this game, you know, they're they're looking right at the top of the table, probably a draw, I believe. So yeah. um, you know, if you're gonna drop points, make sure your rival drops points as well. And and they did. So, you know, that's that's good news for for Barcelona fans. I personally would like to see Barcelona win, uh, switch it up here or or Atletico. Um, so you know, I enjoyed at least seeing that. Um, Calcio. What I got in Calcio here, Inter Milan and specifically Latoro Martinez are officially back. Mm -hmm. um, they started the season off basically sleepwalking. Um, and they were like dropping points, even though they like tied City, which made no sense. And so – um, Lazaro Martinez got one and then he got two. So he's been absolutely abysmal to start the season. So he opens his account. Still like him to, to push for the goals, top goal scorer in, in Calcio here. And once you, once you open the account, like we always say, it's, it's, you know, the goals are going to flow. So we'll kind of see, we'll kind of see how, how he plays in, in, in the next game, but it's good to, for him to have a bounce back game for sure. Yeah, I mean, he's their most important player. I mean, if he's not if he's not banging in goals, Inter probably aren't going to win a whole lot of games, and that's why part of why they've had a slow start. We mentioned that maybe the Milan Derby might wake him up a little bit, uh, because anytime you lose at home to your rival, you're going to have some backlash, um, and they were able to pull out three points on the road. Um, so obviously, that's massive for him, and let's see if that propels them um, into more more wins coming up. Because you know they are what are they? They're and they're only two points back of Napoli. I mean, it's, it's still early. They're, I think they'll be fine, to be honest. But yeah. I'm sure this will start a streak for them. I would not be shocked if they went on a little run here and, you know, reclaim the top spot in Serie A. Yeah, no, absolutely. Congrats to Napoli as well for holding that spot. I playing think that's good pretty, Playing really good ball. Scott McTominay is absolutely <laughs> dominant in, in Calcio right now. So, the only worry for me is, you know, if Lukaku misses extended time at any point, mm -hmm. you have Carvacilia, but is Simeone, is Raspadori going to do the trick up top? I, I just don't see, I don't see, I don't think so. I, I just don't. So um, they have a pretty complete squad other than up top. I just don't think those backup number nines are going to fit the bill. Maybe I would love to be wrong. I mean, Raspadori has been in the, the national team before, so um, we'll, we'll have to see on that. Um, Milan, AC Milan, the other Milan, they, they beat Lecce. So, uh, Fonseca is, I think, stayed the ship for now. Um, I think he'll continue to as well. So I think he's there for the future. Rocky start, but Pulisic continues to dazzle another goal in this game. Rafa Liao is starting to click into gear. He had an absurd pass to Teo Hernandez for Teo Hernandez's goal. Um, I like this Milan lineup a lot. I like this team a lot, and uh, you know, I think I think they're they're gonna play some really attractive football um, throughout the season. They have too much talent to be bad. Um, yeah. They just got too many guys that are, in my opinion, top drawer. Um, I mean, Pulisic, like I, it's so impressive what he's doing. I'm really happy for him, obviously. Um, as a as a US fan, but also like as a guy who supports Chelsea, never really got, I don't think, the treatment he really deserved at Chelsea. And so to see to see him flourish at Milan is great to see. Um if they can get Leal going, I mean, they'll he's obviously way way too talented to be silenced for his, you know, whatever this is, first five games of the year. 
I mean, they get him going alongside Pulisic. I think AC Milan becomes a much more dangerous team. And we'll see if they can put it together in Champions League because obviously they have a big game tomorrow, I believe. Yep, they do. And that's a great segue into this week's games. We have Champions League, Europa League, and Europa Conference League all 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 week so we're really gonna just focus uh, on the champions league because that's you know really what matters at this point um but i wanted to cover some of the biggest games starting with a game that's very dear to me and harrison's heart especially me considering um you know i'm an absolute sicko and i watch the dutch league and i'll watch uh the the portuguese league we have a lineup or matchup of psv for Sporting Lisbon, PSV at home. Mm-hmm. Both teams are, are playing good football right now, but do you do you have an edge for one team or the other? It's hard to pick a side. It really is because both these teams are kind of dominating their leagues. Um, so it's hard for me to want to pick one or the other. I mean, PSV didn't look great in store or against uh, Juventus last week, but obviously Juventus is defending extremely well right now, and it's. It's a tough wall to break right now. Um, Lisbon, uh, I mean, I just feel like these teams honestly are pretty even. Um, I would not be shocked if they drew this game. I think I like Lisbon going forward a little more. Just with the Yoke Rush is so dangerous. Like, he, I mean, I, I really do think he's basically Holland 2.0 in the box. Anytime he gets the ball, it's a problem. Um but I feel like PSV has more depth than Lisbon does. Um, they got a lot of guys that can make a lot of happen. Um, so I really, I honestly, I don't really lean aside here. I, I think that this game will be pretty even, and I wouldn't be shocked if this was a draw. I like if it was at Lisbon at if it was at home at Sporting, I would back Lisbon a thousand percent. I still think they might get a result here, definitely a draw, but I could see them winning this game outright. Uh, I just think they're the better team. They and most importantly, they have they had the better coach. So, um, but I this game could go either way. I think PSV are still a good team, so um, they don't really have to worry about the the Dutch league because they've already almost won that <laughs> already. So. Um, Eredivisie is so bad. This year. Yeah, it's bad last year too. Ajax are are starting to come back a little bit. I still have faith in Ajax, but yeah, the the Dutch league for the most part is, is pretty pretty shitty. Um, Leverkusen versus Milan, um, second biggest matchup I I see here. I think this is going to be a really fun game. We're really fun. I I, I lean by your Leverkusen, um, but. I thought Milan did play Liverpool pretty well, so they could be sneaky here. Um, I just think it's going to be a high-scoring game, but I, I'd probably give the the edge to Milan. To Milan? Or no, I mean, sorry, to Bayer. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm kind of in the same boat. Um, I just feel like I've, I've seen Leverkusen do it for a little longer than Milan. It's been a couple games now for Milan. So obviously that's good mojo heading into this one. Um, I'm with you, like, I could see goals. I feel like they're – part of me thinks that Leverkusen is going to have the majority of the possession, but also I feel like they're not really a possession-based team. Like, I feel like they're more of just kind of hit you from wherever. Um, like, they can go down the flank, and then occasionally, like, Jaka just hits a banger, and you're like, where the hell did that come from? Um, but Milan can be dangerous on the counter. And – both are counterattacking teams, so this could be basketball end to end. I mean, I would love to see that. I just like, I don't know. Part of me is a little scared because we just saw Leverkusen basically park the bus against Bayern, and I'm not by no means saying that Milan is anywhere close to Bayern. Um, but I don't know. Part of me is like, wants to say it'll be low scoring after watching the Bayern game of two really good teams going at it and it becoming like kind of cagey, but also Leverkusen's better in my mind than Milan. So they should, all right, that's why I lean them. I don't know. I'm kind of torn also on this one because Milan's in good form and Leverkusen has shown good form for the best year. Number one, Leverkusen is at home and number two, they didn't want to lose the Bundesliga 
in the first five games of the season. I think is what Leverkusen was thinking this weekend. With Champions League, you have so many games, you can't afford to drop one or two if you need be. Plus, you're at home. I, I do think that this won't be a cagey match. Now, I could be completely wrong, and I understand kind of which, where you're coming from with that. I just think that it's since it's a different competition, I don't know, maybe the same logic applies, but we'll have to see on that one. Um, part of me also part of me also thinks, though, that Milan might get after it a little more after losing their first one. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's also that's also true. That's also true. So I mean we'll have to see. I'm I'm pretty pumped. So we'll be a great I think game it's gonna be one of the best games on the slate. We also have Arsenal PSG. Talk us through that. Then like Bele Ar- dropped, by the way. Sorry. That's all right. Um I like Arsenal at home, to be honest. I, I know I we've said just doesn't do scare it. me in the Champions League. Just can't, can't do it. I know you feel that way. I usually feel that way, but uh, I lean them this week. Um, I think they get it done. Um, I don't know. Just a gut feeling for me. Gut check. Gut, gut check time. Yeah. Um, I think this is going to be super cagey. I think if someone wins, it's going to be like Arsenal, like one now, just a, a horrendous game just in general. So I'm not I'm not a big fan of this one. I don't even know if I'll switch it on, to be honest, but we'll have to see. Um, let's see here. Aston Villa host Bayern Munich. Um, I like that. I, I mean, if I told you like 10 years ago, yeah, Bayern Munich is going to be playing at Aston Villa in the Champions League, you'd be like, what are you talking about, dude? This is an interesting matchup just because, you know, you yeah. not think these two teams would play against each other. Um, how do you feel about it? I feel like there will be a lot of goals. That's my first my first thought. Um, Wide open? I see yeah, that. I can see that. Um, I can see Morgan Rogers just randomly plowing for a guys. On. Guys getting hot. Yeah. Good player confirmed. Yeah. Um, but also... Villa have played a lot of games, dude. They've played a lot of games in a short amount of time. Like, I what was it last week they played uh, midweek FA Cup or yep. Carabao Cup, and then they played Ipswich, Hoff game at Ipswich, and then now they have Bayern. I kind of feel like they're a little overrun right now. Um, not much depth, we're not a lean depth, not a ton of depth. So, I would lean Bayern here. Um, and I think overall they have more talent than Villa, but Villa obviously has, I think, underrated players. Um, it should be fun, though. I feel like it's going to be wide open. We haven't seen Joe Polina in a Bayern shirt really yet. This would be a perfect game to unleash unleash the beast against a former Prem side. I think this is a perfect Joe like Polina game. I just thought about that, and you know, I'm, I, I have noticed he hasn't played that much, so. I'm gonna go ahead and guy since Fulham, dude. What the hell happened? I mean, he's just. I mean, getting, I know he's tough behind these guys, but he's getting settled. He's getting settled. I have no, I have no issue. I think this guy is going to be, you know, a really good player for Byron. So I'm going to keep the faith. Sometimes these signings take a little bit to to get their feet wet. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Byron are going to win this game. I, I do. I could see a high scoring game. Um, but I could also see Villa kind of running out of gas early and, and giving up and, and kind of setting their eyes on the Premier League this weekend. But the other part of me says Unai Emery ball. Look what he's When was the last time Villa had a home game in the Champions League? I mean, got to be – I don't even think there was the Champions League back in the day. I mean, that, and, that's like the part really that – good. That's the part that like – I guess the I atmosphere could be the atmosphere could be crazy. And like, I'm thinking directly back to was it Newcastle point. hosting PSG last it was year. Insane. That place was bonkers. It was and, insane. Uh, so Dude, Villa, that's actually Villa, a really good point. If the Villa crowd comes fired up, they will. It's yeah. going it, to, I mean, it's going to be a tough atmosphere for Byron. Like I still, I, I think lean think them marginally, that. but like, I don't know, man. That's a great point. No, that's a great point. I think it's going to be a fun match. I'm not picking a side. I think it's going to be a fun one. Um, and uh, probably the last game, I just have to ask you, just because I think it's funny, um, 
you know, do you think by what margin do you think uh, Monaco are going to win by um, versus Dinamo Zagreb at Zagreb? Do you think this is a comeback to earth moment in terms of Zagreb actually puts in a good performance or do you think that Monaco are just going to have their way with this team? I was just curious because I couldn't get a good feel for it. Uh, they fired their coach. So I mean, by no, yeah, a, and it's and it's in Croatia. Could be the new, could be the spark they needed. Um, you never Let's know. See. Sometimes when the good guys get the new coach, it's like American sports. You always bet them the first game after that new life. Um, not saying I'm putting money on Zagreb because I'm really not that eager to do that. But uh, I mean, shit, anything's better than what they pulled out whatever it was two weeks ago literally anything like i think the moment they step on the field and before a ball is even is even kicked that's already a better game than they play against Bayern. yeah yeah they'll, they'll always have that first half at least or first 55 first, minutes that, that, those t- those first two minutes of the second half first two minutes of the second half because they were down three now yeah you're right um Sorry, it's kind of an interesting slate. I keep finding games that I want to hear pick your brain on. How about Liverpool? How about your Liverpool boys? Liverpool, Bologna. Um, Liverpool are a weird side. A lot of people are hyping us up right now, and I think we're I think we're good. I didn't even t- get to talk about this, so now I do. Thank you for reminding me. Gravenberg is insane. He's actually one of the best midfielders, if You're not all in. a top three midfielder in the world right now. Um, Whoa. I'd, I'd, if we're talking to, a top three midfield right now, just based off current form, um, I'm going Cole Palmer, I'm going Gravenberg, and um, <laughs> I'm not sure who my third would be, but I know Gravenberg's in there. I mean, he's had five out of seven man of the match performances. Metrics, he's all number one in every single thing in the midfield. It's insane. He, and so I, I feel really good if he plays, basically, is how I'm my mantra. Then you got McAllister as well, who's just an absolute Rolls Royce. Um, absolutely love it. I uh I think I think we play well against this team. Um Bologna don't have Tiago Mata anymore, and it's in and it's at Anfield. So first home game at Anfield in the Champions League, kind of the same logic with Villa. I think it's gonna be raucous. I think Liverpool win. At least by two, if not by five, <laughs> should be comfortable. I hope so. I mean, our back line—it's sketchy once our back line is is rotated. That's where it gets gets. Your back line's been bagging some goals, though. Yeah, so back but getting involved. Yeah, but that's with Ibu and Verge. When you put Kwanza, I'm just there. saying in general. Yeah, no, I, I will say that the corners have been have been nice this year. Um, Atletico and Benfica. What do we think? Well, That's the one I I don't know. I mean, yeah. But Benfica's kind of a wagon now. Yeah. Portuguese atmosphere. We don't bring that into consideration enough. That Liverpool place, couldn't believe it. Last dude, that time place, That's a tough place to play. It's a fat uh, stadium. Too. It's beautiful. Yeah, I heard it's massive. I know you there. have first-hand experience. Um, yeah. I lean Atletico, obviously. I think Benfica just aren't great. Um, but... Again, like these road games with these with these home teams, they almost feel like traps sometimes. This when you're thinking trap. about betting them, you're all in on Benfica. No, but I just know this is a trap. This is one of I those could see traps. It. I lean Atletico, but I could also very well see a draw. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if I was, like I re- I would not be shocked in the slightest if this game tied. Yeah, no, I, I don't see where I'm losing. I don't see Atletico losing either. I'm just saying this could be a trap game. I'd say Lille Madrid is a big trap game. I, um, I I don't know. I just feel like Real Madrid stink. And then I think the <laughs> the Villa Bayern game could be a trap game. Um, so yeah. those are kind of my trap games I got for everyone. Not in a betting sense, but just like you might, you'd naturally just chalk it up. And I don't know. I feel like we'll see at least one upset the, this week. Now, it wouldn't be an episode if we didn't have our best bets, so we're going to give those to you right now. I'm going to say mine. Harrison's going to say his, um, so we can uh, get a nice clip out for everybody. So my plays, um, I am 72, 62, and 8. Um, Harrison, you are 66, 64, and 13. 
both above 500. Love that. My plays for Champions League. Stugart, Sparta, Praha, over three and a half. Mm -hmm. Barcelona, Young Boys, over four. No ditty. Bayer Leverkusen, AC Milan, over three. Liverpool, Bologna, Liverpool to win by two. And Dortmund, Celtic, over three. Okay, and I got Dennis Undov, anytime goal scorer against Sparta Praha, as you said. Um, Barcelona, who, who even owned it? Young boys. young boys. Barcelona Young Boys over four. Um, Dortmund Celtic over three. Arsenal money line against PSG. Good number, minus 140. Um, and Villa Bayern over three, as well as a game we didn't really talk about. Juventus Leipzig under two and a half. Give me the brick wall of Juve. KG. KG. Love like it. Like that. It. Love it. All right. All right. Well, you heard it here, folks. If you want some action, Feel free to tell our picks or, you know, you could also fade us and see how that goes. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, Good and, week uh, last week. It was a great week for or us. Last whatever, week. The two weeks ago. It was. So, you know, we, we enjoyed Champions League. We're glad we're back. And uh, we'll be back on Thursday to recap and give you a preview for this weekend's best action. <laughs>